Christ the Lord is coming soon. The advent of God is drawing near. We gather this morning to prepare the way. In thanksgiving and praise, let us worship the Lord. Angels from the realms of glory Wing your flight o'er all the earth Ye who sang creation story Now proclaim Messiah's birth Come and worship Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. The newborn King Come and worship Come and worship Worship Christ The newborn King Oh, 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 oh. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, you have seen his guiding star. The newborn King Come, come and worship Come, come and worship Come, come and worship Worship Christ the newborn King Let us pray. Gracious God, the whole world rejoices at the coming of your Son. Everywhere around us, we see signs of his coming. As we gather on this day as your family, draw us closer to you. Fill our hearts with anticipation and longing for your Son's return and make his spirit very present in our midst. 
May the life symbolized in the hanging of these greens be a sign of the greater life we find in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The prophet Isaiah writes, Here is my herald whom I will send, and he will prepare your way. Prepare the way, prepare your heart and mind. Let everyone stand silent. Let the stars and moon cease to move. Let the leaves of the trees and the tall browning grass cease to rustle in the wind. With expectant hush and long-awaiting yearning, we herald the coming of the long-awaited Christ child, the coming of the infant to Bethlehem. Advent, a Latin word for coming. Prepare the way. Prepare the heart to receive. Christ is coming. Let us prepare for the advent, the coming of the Christ child. On this first week of Advent, let us prepare with repentance, let us prepare with hope, let us prepare with faith, for the light will come into this world as God has promised. The Christ child came into Bethlehem's stable, he will come into the world again, into every life that waits and into every hopeful heart. The Messiah comes to bring Christmas to each and every one of us, so let us now prepare to receive him. Let us now begin our service of preparation. Come, let us begin our expectant waiting for Christ the Messiah, the Lord. We acknowledge the prophecies and celebrate the coming of Christ with traditions, with worship, with reverent waiting. There are many symbols of waiting, of preparation. There are many customs to hail the advent, which is Latin for the coming. Foremost among the symbols is the advent wreath, the wreath of coming. The circle of the wreath, like God himself, has no beginning and no end. The circle of evergreen, a circle of meaning, a symbol of that which is as eternal as God, as victorious as the coming Christ, and as everlasting as his promises. The Advent wreath is a symbol of hope, a symbol of four Sabbaths of waiting. Four candles light the wreath. Three are purple. Purple is the color of kings. It is also the color of repentant preparation. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, the rose candle is set aglow, remembering the unfettered joy of the angel's song. The center candle is white, pure white, lit when Christ is come. Listen to these words from the prophet of Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, 
and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, verses 2 and 6. As we light the first candle, we remember the prophets of old who de demanded to be heard, who spared to speak of a child to come, God with us, the eternal Christ. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the prophets among us who bring to us surprising new visions of hope, who challenge us to think outside the box, who show us a future we never anticipated. Grant us your wisdom and understanding that we will prepare well for the coming of your promised counselor. Amen. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light this candle as a symbol of the prophets who renew our faith and remind us of what we may be. When all the earth is brown, when the leaves have departed from the trees, evergreens stand in lonely vigil until the earth again is green. Evergreens shout to us about the hoped for coming of green again. Evergreens stand ever ready to remind us of this joyous hope the joyous reality of the eternal presence of the Christ child, the eternal presence in all the world. The most striking and the most universal feature of Christmas is the use of evergreens in churches and in homes. Among ancient Romans, evergreens were a symbol of peace, joy, and victory. The early Christians placed them in their windows to indicate that Christ had entered the home. Holly and ivy, along with pine and fir, are, are all called evergreens because they never change color. They are ever green, ever alive, even in the midst of winter. They symbolize the unchanging nature of our God and they remind us of the everlasting life that is ours through Christ Jesus. In Isaiah 60, 13, we find these words, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto you, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of our, your sanctuary. Evergreen, everlasting, eternal, green branches are a part of our preparation, our waiting, a symbol of hope, a symbol of eternity, a reminder of love received. Evergreen is a symbol of the eternal promise of renewal, a symbol of the eternal and everlasting God. In the past 200 years, a new element has found its place in our Christmas celebration. It is from the Christian practices and symbols in Mexico that we have adopted this tradition. In the very early part of the 19th century, an American ambassador spent a tour of duty in Mexico. He admired the dramatic beauty of the bright red poinsettia that grew rooftop high and bloomed profusely at Christmas. He was awed when Mexican Christians told him why the bright red poinsettias were a part of their celebration of the birth and life of Christ. Legend tells of a young girl 
who was too poor to provide a gift for the celebration of Jesus' birthday. The tale goes that the child was inspired by an angel to gather weeds from the roadside and place them in front of the church altar. Crimson, crimson blossoms sprouted from the weeds and became beautiful poinsettias. Called the flower of the holy night, the star-shaped leaves pointed to the Bethlehem star that shone over the place where Jesus was born. While the color red reminds us that the child in the manger became the man on the cross, giving himself to the world in love and that not even death could contain. Today, the Christmas tree is at the center of so many of our festivities. Glittering with lights and ornaments, it is a part of the beauty and meaning of Christmas. The story is told that on one Christmas Eve, Martin Luther wandered outdoors and became enraptured by the beauty of the starry sky. Its brilliance and loveliness led him to reflect on the glory of the first Christmas Eve as seen in Bethlehem's radiant skies. Wishing to share with his wife and his children the enchantment he had felt, he cut from the forest an evergreen glistening in the snow and took it home. He placed candles upon it to represent the glorious heavens he had seen. Luther said the Christmas tree, with its top pointing up to heaven, was like hands folded in prayer, pointing to the throne of grace from which we receive our Savior. As we decorate the tree with symbols of Christ's saving work, may our hearts be drawn ever closer to the way of Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. John 1, 1 through 5. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is coming among us. During this Advent, whenever you see a lighted Christmas tree, let it call to mind the one who brings light to our darkness, healing to our brokenness, and peace to the world.
we're a culture who wants it now, aren't we? We love instant coffee, or at least coffee from a Keurig, which is pretty close. We like instant credit. We like instant gratification. We want it now. We like things on demand. My kids think it's a personal affront anytime they're forced to suffer through an actual commercial on live television. We're not good at waiting, friends. And Advent is all about waiting. And so we usually just skip ahead. It seems like most years we don't really have four weeks of Advent and then Christmas. We have four weeks of Christmas that we call Advent. My first church out of seminary, we tried one year to have have a real Advent. You know, we do this with Lent and Easter. We don't sing Alleluia. We don't sing Christ the Lord is risen today on Ash Wednesday. We wait for Easter Sunday. We said, well, let's try that with Advent. So we were just going to sing Advent hymns, no Christmas carols. The choir did an Advent cantata all about waiting and preparation. We didn't celebrate Christmas at all until Christmas Eve. No joy to the world, no angels we have heard on high until Christmas Eve. Let me tell you. Everybody hated it. I mean really, really, truly hated it. Hated it with the heat of a thousand suns. And and I decided I liked being employed, so we didn't ever try that again. And I'm not suggesting at all that we try that now. We'll we'll sing Christmas carols. Don't you worry about that. We'll sing all the carols we love this season. But I want you to know, I want you to notice that there's a real difference between Advent and Christmas. And honestly, the music probably helps us see more than anything else. You turn on the TV or the radio right now, and the rest of the world is singing peppy songs about family and home and and hippopotamuses. But we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. We sing, let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Well, ho, 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 and fa, la, 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 la. We sing these old hymns with old melodies in minor keys, which are are such a stark contrast to what the rest of the world is doing. The rest of the world sings, Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know. See, maybe the biggest difference is that, that for many of us, for most of us, Christmas is about remembering. It's about honoring the past, about looking back with fondness and tenderness and nostalgia. I've heard it said that Christmas is like a time machine for many of us, taking us back to all those Christmases we have ever spent on this earth. For most of us, Christmas looks back, but Advent looks forward. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made. Not the days have surely come and gone, and gee, wasn't it great way back when, The days are surely coming, our best days wait ahead. God is going to finish what God started. Advent's about remembering God's promise for the future, which is simply this. Everything's going to be okay. I've discovered you say that a lot as a parent. I say that a lot as a dad. When my kids get scared, when the world gets dark and hard to understand, when it feels like everything's crashing down on your head, we say, everything's going to be okay. It works better sometimes than others. It's hard to believe sometimes. There are madmen across the world wreaking havoc and terror with bombs, and there are madmen in our backyard doing the same thing. There are thousands upon thousands of refugees seeking shelter and safety and sanctuary, and there are real concerns about our own safety and security. There are children who have been abandoned. There are seniors who have to choose between food and medicine. There are are women and girls being bought and sold. And and we're all worried about our own families too, our health, our income, our future. And still God whispers in our ears, everything's going to be okay. In the face of all that the world can throw at us, all we have is that promise. Everything's going to be okay. It sounds empty when I say it. It sounds empty when I say it, but I believe it's true. Even in the face of the worst life has to offer, everything's going to be okay because God is good and righteous and just. Everything's going to be okay because neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Everything's going to be okay because if God can show up 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, then then maybe God can show up here. Maybe God can show up now. Maybe God can show up in my life, in my world. Everything's going to be okay. 
because God keeps God's promises. It's great to look back and remember. It's, it's important to celebrate all the ways that God has been with us in our lives and our past and the stories that shape us. It's essential that we look back and remember. But Advent reminds us the season is not just about what happened in the past. It's not just about God who came back then to those people in that place. It's that God is coming to us in this place at any moment. And it means that, that whatever tomorrow holds, it's going to be okay. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel, to the house of Judah. That's what we're counting on. It's what we're waiting for. And friends, let me tell you, it's worth the wait. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit Merit, raise us to thy glorious When the Christmas decorations come out, usual fixtures of a room are often pushed to the side to make room. But in this place, the table remains at the center. All of the lights and the ribbons and the garlands that have decorated the sanctuary point us back to the table where we meet the hope of all the earth the joy of every longing heart. Let us pray. Loving and eternal God, as we begin Advent, our focus shifts to the birth of Jesus. And yet at this table, we bear witness to his life, death, and resurrection to help us on the path to eternal life. Just as Jesus was born from your spirit of love, so too were we born from that spirit. May we dwell in your love. May we reflect your love. And may we share your love. God, as we share this communion meal together, reaffirm our gratitude for the gift of your son, Jesus. Rekindle our hearts to a spirit of love for all. Amen.
And so friends, we tell this cherished story once again. How on that night, Jesus with his disciples in the upper room took the bread and gave thanks for it and broke it, saying, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. with hearts filled by the grace we receive at this table, we offer the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ the Lord is coming soon. The advent of God is drawing near. So quiet your souls, friends.
Rest your spirit and prepare your heart. Amen.